Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Nina Ribena's Art Journal Prompts and More. It's April week four and so time for me to work in my scrap journal for Use Your Scraps. Before I start though, I just want to have a chat about a question I posed in the Facebook group a few days ago. I asked what um, your thoughts were regarding the changes that I had made to the Facebook group for this year and invited you to voice your opinion. Um, and some of you are saying, that you don't like um, the the rigid structure of the group so much this year and you prefer the surprise element that we had each week last year. Now let me just explain why I decided to change things. Um, I've been doing art journal prompts now for two years, two and a half years probably um, and you know trying to think of a, a new prompt, something that we haven't done um, before is actually really really difficult and um, you know time consuming, it takes a lot of research um, and because we've done so many things as well trying to think of something that we haven't done before um, had become quite challenging and I just felt that you know my creativity and spontaneity was just you know dwindling and that I felt that I needed some kind of consistency I mean sometimes I was spending you know two or three days trying to think of an idea rather than actually getting on with with doing something and so you know that just wasn't feasible for me anymore but you know i hear what you're you're saying um so uh, you know people have voiced their opinions about um the prompts that they like and the ones that they don't um the mood board seems quite popular i know we had some teething problems with that and it's taken a few of you you know a couple of months to get your head around what the mood board is ab about and how to interpret it but you know now that um it's familiar that seems really popular so i want to keep that the chair um, the same and also that i think we've always got the surprise element with the mood board because there's a new one each and every month and I think Elaine is doing an absolutely superb job of putting the mood boards together for us so you know thanks very much for that Elaine you're doing a cracking job so week one will be the same we'll keep the mood board um, now the biggest problem seems to, seems to be the junk it up in week two and use your scraps in week four which some of you are finding really difficult to um, differentiate between I mean to me you know junk is taking a piece of junk and you know repurposing it and scraps are just you know the smaller pieces collage elements that you might have anything that you've got lying around your desk um, but you know I can see where the confusion is coming from and so what I've decided to do is combine the two and rename it recycle repurpose and reuse um, I asked uh, your opinions last year about what um, projects you'd like to do going forward for 2019 and scraps was one of the most popular things um, so I do want to keep that but as I say I'm going to rename it recycle repurpose and reuse which I think will probably make a bit more sense to um, everybody so we'll do that in week two this is not setting concrete by the way and um, again I'm going to you know ask for your op opinions and, and views and see what you think about it before we finalize it it. Um, so week two, as I say, recycle, repurpose, reuse, R, R, R. So really easy to remember. Um, the comments um, in the, 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 that were left last week suggest that you are, are enjoying the calendar page. I know that some of you are not taking part, but please remember that if the calendar week is of no interest to you, then I always provide alternatives. You can do an art journal page, you can do an artist trading card, um, you can do a tag, you could do a greetings card. You know, it's really, really flexible. So, you know, if the calendar is of no interest to you, then, you know, that's not setting uh, concrete. There are alternatives for you or skip it you know there is no um, need to do every single week if you don't want to now week four I'm thinking about um, going back to last year's format where I'll create a surprise prompt um, so for instance we might do something on shapes or I might provide a colour um, palette for you that um, I want you to base something on and again it will be really flexible so that those of you that are into art journal pages um, will be happy if you want to do a smaller piece, an artist trading card, that is entirely up to you. As long as you follow the prompt that I set during week four then you know absolutely fine. Um, and then I think in a um, five week month I shall keep the wild card um, going as we've already been doing. So those 
those are my thoughts um, which I'm planning to introduce from um, May which of course will be next week so have a think about what I've said so week one mood board week two recycle repurpose reuse week three calendar page week four I will provide a prompt to reintroduce that surprise element so the mood board is a surprise and week four you you, you, you know you will have no idea what's what's coming and then week five um will be the wild card so let me know what you think and you know if you've got any views or, or comments then you know leave me um, a message in the comments below of course this is my journal so far let me see if i can fit it in let's just move my cup of tea out of the way um so let me just do a little bit of a, a flip through so this is what i've got so far um and i just want you know lots of interactive elements in my journal i'm trying to use pieces that um, i've done in previous projects as well um so that nothing goes to waste i just absolutely love that um, and i think it looks lovely against that black background as well what else have i got um that's a previous piece of artwork that I did last year and mounted. Of course, the lavenders I did last month. Um, so that's how my journal is coming along so far. Now, of course, last week, let me just find a, a blank page to put it against. I created two artist trading cards for the Easter prompt. So I want to work on this so far. And I'm thinking that I can maybe use this tag here that was in the pocket um, just to mount it on. So let me just move my journal out of the way I'm going to take the little um, tag off um, and I want to ink around the edges this tag was just created with a piece of cereal box that I folded in half and glued down so it's really nice um, and sturdy whoops a daisy and so I'm just going to ink around the edges with some frayed burlap just to um, frame my tag so we'll do that all the way um, around I'm just going to um, grab a blending tool as well just to so that we've got a a softer finish there we go what's it looking like on the back we'll distress the back as well I might end up covering the back with some book paper or something I'm not sure yet or I could just leave it blank so that um, you know I've got journaling space if ever I decide I want to write in this journal I don't tend to um, do that for me it's sort of more of a visual journal that um, that I like now I don't know whether you can see um, the paper that's in the background has got um, some type script on it this is the background paper that I used it's from a design pad from the works which was two pounds now I haven't got um, any oh whoops Daisy I've lost one of my stars I'll have to glue that back on with some Fabri-Tac um, but I haven't got um, a type script um, stamp but I don't know whether you can see there's some text in here as well and I'm going to try and um, emulate that in my background just to add a bit more interest and this is the um, stamp that I've got here now I'm going to use a memento ink in espresso truffle let me just um, glue my star back on because that's bugging me. I'm going to use some fabric type which is nice and strong. Let's just fix that because I know me, I'll end up um I'll end up losing it. There we go, that's better. I've just had to unblock the nozzle of my fabric tag. So I'm just going to apply some of this memento ink. And I want this to be a bit random. I'm not going over the whole of the stamp. And let's just try and put a bit of stamping in the background. There we go. And as I say, I just want just a, a little bit of interest. There we go, not too much. There we go, that's fine. That I'd quite like to distress the edges of the tag because of course that's what I did um, with the artist trading card. So I'm just going to take my scissors to the edges like this and just rough it up a bit um, and then I'll ink again. There we go, that's better. I like how that looks. And so I am just going to glue my artist trading card down. Now I know that um, I put some of the Cosmic Shimmer paint on the back, um, but you know, that's just the way it goes sometimes. Sometimes you change your mind and things you've done get lost. Um, but you know, that's okay. So I'm just going to pop that down, make sure I get it um, centralized. And then I can put my um, fibres, my ribbon back in. 
that's my finished tag. Um, I've put um, a brass eyelet in there as well, so that's just finished um, that off. Now, um, as far as placement um, is concerned in my journal, I'm not sure whether I want to pop it back in there. Of course, the colours go perfectly, it looks really nice, but of course it's hidden. So I'm wondering whether I should perhaps um, pop it on that envelope there. Um, I'm going to leave it for the time being and have, have a think about that. Well, of course, it's not spring without daffodils. Um, so I photocopied this, which is an image out of a Daphne's Diary magazine. Let me just find... Oh, there we go. Um, so I've just photocopied this because I didn't want to cut that out. I just think that's absolutely beautiful. And so I think that would look really nice if it was mounted on this black and white page. So I'm just going to um, fussy cut that out if I can find a small pair of scissors daffodil um, cut out and um, because the daffodil was at the top of the page let me just um, show you what what I mean I'm just going to show you how I'm going to fix that um, you see that petal there was at the top of the page so I'm just going to trim it um, here we go we'll use the smaller scissors just trim it into a rounder shape just so that it looks as if it's supposed to be be like that. There we go. Sorted. And then I'm just going to ink around the edges as well because um, it's not standing out on the page as much as I would like it to. So if I ink around the edges um, using some frayed burlap distress ink, it should just make it stand out a bit better. This is um, quite thin paper, so I'm going to have to be careful that I don't um, tear it. So I'm going to go off screen to do that. I've inked around the edges of my daffodil and that's how I'm going to have it. So I'm just going to use a glue stick to glue that down. Um, and I'm just working on a piece of, I don't know whether this is greaseproof paper or parchment paper, um, just to catch the catch the glue and stop the mess. Let's just carefully grab hold of that without tearing it. And pop that, pop that down. Just there, like, like that. There we go. Decided I want to um, add this poem to the left hand side. So that's the page from the magazine. This has been reduced down by 69% by the way. So I've just cut that out from um, the, the page, but I want to mount it on something because it just looks a bit plain. So I've pulled out this piece of yellow paper from the design pad. Um, so I just need to decide on a spot now. I quite like that um, area area there I think. So I'm just going to trim around it and glue it down. I've cut that mount out and I'm just going to ink around the edges again in frayed burlap on both pieces. Well I just love how that looks. I'm so glad that I decided to add the poem. So spring flowers. Good morning lovely flowers. Just waking up having a yawn. Yes the spring is nearly here. Did you sleep well next to the lawn? It was a bore here without you. Empty garden, no flowers, no leaves, only a few tall bare trees. We even had snow would you believe? Ever so happy to see you again and so I'm outside enjoying the fresh air, seeing the beautiful yellow flowers and hearing the birds sing without care. I feel the early springtime sun, the garden finally starts to bloom because whenever you are there, spring is starting, no more gloom. Isn't that pretty? I just love that. Right, okay, so, so that's that. Now I have decided um, that I want to add my rabbit tag to this page here but I just feel that I need some kind of border. Um, um, I found this um, paper bag in my stash um, which again fits the, the scraps theme. Um, the pink goes really well with the flowers on the right hand side and it's the same kind of light pink as in the roses. So I think what I am going to do is, let's have a look, let's just cut sort of like a scallop border. I'm just going to freehand cut it like this. And I'm going to need to do two because this paper bag um, isn't quite quite big enough. And then I can do the same on the other side and then piece it together. Let's see if I can have them somewhere. The same kind of uh, size. I can tweak this if I, if I need to. There we go. And then I can place that 
along the edge something something like that that's actually worked out really well because the paper bag is doubled over i can have a scallop on the front and the back so i'm just going to go and sew this with my sewing machine my sewing machine hasn't been out for a couple of weeks alex is home and um, i did plan on doing some sewing with him on his lovely um, posh sewing machine but he's we've been so busy and he's been at the library revising um, all over the easter period we just haven't had any time yeah i think that's going to work and that's how it looks um, on the other side that's how my page looks now that I've put the board on. I just think that's so pretty. I really like that. Um, and I'm going to glue that on with some Fabri-Tac. But what I want to do to start off with, let me just put a board behind here. I want to bring some of the black into the border just to make it um, more whimsical. So I've got some black paint here. And this is one of my paint brush protectors that you've seen me use many, many, many times before. And I'm just going to add some whimsical dots like this just to you know just make it slightly more whimsical I like that look I'm trying to be random about it I'm not doing it to um, all of them let's move that I'll have one on there like that and I just think that looks really cute and um, just bring some of the back the black um, into that that border really happy with that um, so I'm just going to um, glue this down now with some Fabri-Tac look who's come to say hello He's been fed about, oh gosh, about an hour ago, had half a tin of cat food and he's been a greedy monkey because he wants more and he's not having any because look at the size of him. He's just a complete greedy chops, aren't you? Hey, show your face. Can people see how beautiful and pretty you are? Mm. My gorgeous boy, aren't you, Lulu? Hey, say hello, Louie. Can you hear that purring? Oh, he's just so beautiful. So that's that page after Louis' um, surprise visit. I love that border on the side. I think that gives it a really whimsical look. So now I want to work on this page. Here I've got um, an idea for this page. Um, and what I want to do is use this um, napkin. Of course, we've got a bit of a, um, an animal theme going on. We've got the Easter theme here. And, you know, this is a very Easter um, inspired napkin as well. So I just want to add these into the background the background itself is already really pretty of course that's the back and I've already added some of the um, blue floral washi tape so I'm just going to cut um, just one square of this napkin out oh now they go in different orientations which way do I want it I think I want it that way round so I'm just going to cut this one out the napkin to go something like this but I don't want these straight edges because you'll just be able to see it when I put it um, on the background so I'm just going to move that out of the way um, of course napkins are usually two or three ply this one you can see is three ply and it's come apart really really easily um, I've got some water here and let me just find a paintbrush um, and to tear it and um, make it look less regular all you need to do is just apply some water like this um, I'll apply some to the edges um, as well there we go apply some to the bottom and then it'll tear really easily um, and just become more jagged and then when I glue it down you just won't be able to um, see it it will just blend into the background I've um, torn around the edges of my napkin and I'm going to glue it down. Um, now, did I have some watered down glue? I think I did actually. Let's just see. Um, yep, here we go. I've got some watered down Mod Podge. Um, let me just put the lid back on my regular Mod Podge. Watered down Mod Podge. Um, it's just a bit thinner um, and it just makes it easier to apply your napkins without them tearing. It's not quite as sticky. So I'm just going to apply some of this over the background. Um, I think the background I've used here is probably water soluble. Um, I've got a feeling it was when we were doing the technique with um, water soluble felt tip pens, but you know, that's okay. It's, um, it's fine and I'm just going to pop this down 
like that. And I've got a piece of cling film um, kitchen wrap which I'm just going to use just to spread it out because um, I've shown you this technique before, this tip before, it just means that you can press your napkin down without the fear of it tearing. Apply a little bit to the to the edges just to make sure it's it's glued down and and that's that. I'm just going to dry this now with my heat tool and decide whether I want to do anything else to it. Well, I've obviously got quite a harsh um, edge here so I've picked out some Neo Color 2s which are water soluble um, oil pastels and I've chosen the blue um, in here. Um, also this colour here which is ochre and olive clair which is um, a green and I'm just going to apply some to the to the edge like this. As I say these are, are water soluble just to try and soften um, things slightly. Here we go we'll add a bit there and then I've got um, a jar of water and I can just dilute this and just see if we can blend out that background a, a little bit and already you see that looks um, looks much much better. So I just continued with the water soluble crayons just blending in the background into that page and I'm really happy with that um, and as a quote I've printed um, that page from Daphne's diary off again just the poem and I want to use um, now where was it and so I'm outside enjoying the fresh air. I feel the early springtime sun and so I just want to have that as my quote and I've printed it on um, yellow cardstock this time where it's sort of like a, a cream. This was a mistake. I wanted some um, sort of ivory cardstock and it's come in this horrible sickly cream colour but they did ref uh, re uh, refund my money because it wasn't what I was expecting so it hasn't cost me anything and I do want to try and use it up so I'm just going to cut these out like this and then I'm going to ink around the edges with some frayed burlap just to take that um, buttercream colour um, away and just make it look slightly more vintagey. So let's just get rid of those. Um, what have I done with it? Here we go. We'll just um, ink around the edges just to make it look slightly more vintagey, as I say, and to just get rid of that um, buttercup colour as well. That looks better. There we go. That's not too bad now. Um, and then I'm just going to glue it, glue it down with some regular glue. And so I'm outside enjoying the fresh air. I feel the early springtime sun. I've just decanted some, I think this is Fabri-Tac, into a fine nozzle bottle. Um, just because it's easier on small pieces like this. There we go. That will do, do nicely. There we are. So that's how that page looks. I love that. Um, really pleased with that. So what have I got so far for this week? We've got that page there. Um, we've got the bunny rabbit page. I just love that. Um, then of course my daffodil page. Um, I think that's really pretty. That works really well. What I've decided to do um, is add this tag here that I made in week two, I think it was. Um, so I've got that um, that I'm putting in the front there. In fact, this might have been just um, an odd video that um, I did, but I certainly made it this month with all the um, crochet bits and pieces that my friend Mel sent me. This one has got any of her crochet in it um, but I made it at the same time and I'll leave um, links to all the videos that are mentioned um, in this particular video in the description box below um, now I just feel that this page here um, is looking a little bit busy so I've grabbed what have I done with it just a strip of painty paper from my stash and I'm just going to tear around the edges just because it's um, too straight just to try and get rid of some of the busyness so I'm just going to tear around the edges and that will allow me to add some kind of quote um, to this strip here I'm not quite sure what yet but um, I'm sure I'll come up with them um, with something. Okay, so I've torn around the edges and I don't think I'm going to ink it either. I'm just going to glue it on um, like that. Um, let's just grab some fabric tack just because it's um, it's here. Here 
we go. So I'm just going to stick stick that down. Um, and that looks better already. It's just taking some of that busyness away. And then I found um, this little piece of um, ephemera here. Now this was from um, an Artful Days ephemera pack that I had, um, was it last year or the, the year before? I think it was the year before. And so I thought I might be able to use the Artful Days because of course, you know, that's what this is all about. So I know that's a brand name, but you know, that's okay. It doesn't matter. Um, so I'm just going to um, trim that. I'm going to try and leave a bit of a white border around the around the edge. We've got Artful Days um, and then we've got this part of the logo here as well so I thought I might be able to add just a little piece of that at um, either either end because that just looks a bit a bit short. Let's see. We go I think I can um, live with that so I'm just going to glue this down as well and to finish it off I think I'm just going to do some um, scribbly lines around the outside um, just really really loose like this with a really fine pen this one here um, is a Japanese um, Muji pen um, it's just really, really fine, 0.25 millimetres. I really like this pen. I'm just going to go around the outside like, like this. There we go. So I did a bit more, more detail. I really like that. You might not even be able to see that um, on camera. If I can get the lid off my pen, never mind. Let me just um, see if I can show you. happy with that and I just want to do one more thing. Um, where's the page I'm looking for? I just want something to go inside my pocket here. So I've cut um, three tags. They measure four and a half by um, two and three quarters. I want three tags to go in um, this little paper bag pocket here. And I've got a Peter Rabbit um, napkin that was sent to me in Happy Mail. I cannot remember who sent me this. I've got a feeling it was Kathy Wax. Wexler, um, but I might be wrong so if you recognize it feel free to let me know um, in the comments um, but I've got an idea for this. I've got an edition of what Katie did at school and I'm just going to tear some pages out. I need three for the three tags. There we go that will that will do um, and what I'm going to do is now of course napkins as we already know are usually two or three ply this one's three I can tell I'm just wetting my fingers and just trying to peel it apart you can use sellotape um, if you want to here it comes here we go and then what I want to do then is apply some glue. I'm just going to use a glue stick. What have I done with it? I'm just going to use a scotch glue stick all over the paper. And then I'm just going to glue my napkin um, down like that. Where's my piece of cling film? Let's use the cling film just to go over the top just to make sure we don't tear it and make sure that it's glued down properly. And I'm going to do this with um, all of the others as well. Well, the, all of the others, the other two as well. There we go. These are my three um, book pages and I'm going to trim these on my paper trimmer. Now, of course, my tag measures four and a half by two and three quarters and I do want a border. I just want my images to fit into this part here just so that you can see the craft paper around the edges. So I'm just going to have a play around and I'll let you know what size I end up with. So I ended up cutting these to three and a half by two and a half um, just to fit in the space there and I do want to um, around the corners as well um, just because I like that look I just think it looks nice and finishes um, things off and then I can glue them down and isn't that cute I love that how sweet so before I glue them down I'm going to ink around the edges just to add to that um, vintagey quirky vibe really loving this look at the moment I just think it's whimsical for this kind of thing and just looks really sweet so those three are done and I'm going to do exactly the same with the tags as well. 
going to glue these down and again I'm just going to use a glue stick just paying um, particular attention to the edges as I always do just because I don't want them to come unstuck but you know for paper as I've said before glue stick is plenty strong enough you won't go wrong with a, a good glue stick um, so we'll have it something something like that I just want to make sure that um, the spacing is even on both sides and then I'm going to punch a hole um, and find some kind of um, string to use as a little you know just want some fibers to add some um, interest through the through the top but you know how cute is that I'm going to punch holes in the tops of my tags I'm just going to eyeball it using the largest hole um, setting on my cropper dial there we go and then what I'm going to do is I've got some um, hole reinforcers just paper ones I could use my brads but um, but I'm not going to and I'm going to grab some of my frayed burlap distress ink and I'm just going to color them so I need six um, so we'll just go over those like that just to color them to get them to match in with the color of the tags like that really quick and easy there we are and then peel them off and um, and stick them stick them on so we can just pop those over like that these are a little bit bigger but you know that's okay that's fine doesn't bother doesn't bother me so I'm going to do this to all of them and then find some kind of um, string or twine or fibers there we go just got some garden twine that I'm going to use to go through it so I'll cut three the same size because otherwise that will bug me if they're not even um, of course you know it doesn't have to be the same size if you don't want them to be but you know I know that it will irritate me that will do and then I can just double it over and put it through and I might need to trim this a little bit more we'll see we will see Cute, cute, cute. Yeah, that's way too long. I really like that. I just think these look so cute. And to finish them off, I've picked three words um, from the Tim Holtz um, chit chat. I've inked around the edges as well, just to get rid of the um, harsh lines. And where do I want that to go? Something like like that. I just think that will add just a little something um, extra to the tags. So that's that one there. We'll have imagine just here like that and then memories on this one here and then I can pop those into my journal and I think that's me done for this this week. There we go like like that. Oh those cute adorable I love those. Pop these three tags um, into my pocket like that. I've got journaling space um, on the back if ever um, I want it. Um, to be honest, I am just thoroughly enjoying using up my supplies and, you know, scraps and odds and sods that I've got lying around my craft room. It's just, you know, a wonderful way to use up bits and pieces. So here's my journal so far. So we've got the inside cover that I'll have to do something with. Um, that's the first page. Of course, you've seen um, this before, the interactive pieces that I did in the first week. Um, then the pages I've done over the last couple of months as well. I just love these. I just think it's coming together absolutely beautifully. Still got to do something with the centre pages um, here. I just love that page this week. I just think that looks gorgeous. Um, and I just love how they work together. So, of course, you know, I've got my little tags in the pocket there. Treasure, Memories and Imagine. I just love those. Um, my ducks, aren't those cute? I love those. Um, the flower page I did. Um, the heart page. Um, the Art Deco page and I think that um, is it so far. I don't think there's anything on any of the others. 
um, so that's it for this week so I hope you enjoyed following along with my journaling um, this week I think the junk journal that I'm putting together is different from any of the others that I've seen um, on YouTube it's very much my style it's just you know colorful and quirky and a mishmash of absolutely all sorts which I just absolutely love um, now as I said at the beginning of the video um, we can make changes to the format of the group so do let me know your thoughts in the comment section below so that we can make the changes as from um, next week and um, you know just stick with it then for the rest of the year but hopefully sort of you know do something that's more inspiring to some of you that are just not feeling it at the moment um, so take care everyone and I'll see you all again soon bye for now